are again, day two. Welcome to the Games Radar live stream here at PAX East in Boston. My name is James. I'm Melissa. And today we are joined by Simon. Yes. Hello, how are you doing? I'm very good. If good people morning. don't know by your t shirt, you're here to show off a little known game <laughs> called GTFO. Yeah. Uh, how's it been going on the show so far? Overwhelmingly well. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Yeah, line's been long, and, and people who have played it for the first time have enjoyed it a lot. And those who may, I mean, some people already own the game and still stand in line for hours just to play the new th uh, expedition that hasn't been released before. Cool. Is that what you've got here at PAX? Yeah, we're showing off uh, the first expedition of the ne next set of expeditions that's going to be released soon. Great. Well, I think we've got some gameplay that we can look at mm -hmm. while we're talking about yeah. uh, the game. So for those people who, I don't know how many of you there are, not very many, who don't know about what the game is. <laughs> oh, I thought is. you meant watching. <laughs> no, there's people watching. There's, there's quite a lot of people watching. Uh, but for those who don't know what it is, what's the like overall concept of GTFO? The, elevator, the elevator pitch would be Left 4 Dead uh, crossed with uh, Alien Isolation. So it is a four-player co-op uh, four-player co-op first-person shooter PvE game. Mm -hmm. But it has a much slower pace and like more, there's more exploration and it has more of a horror theme than most other I such games. So three of the members of the team, including myself, worked on the Payday franchise, Payday the Heist and, mm -hmm. and Payday 2. Uh, so it's in the pedigree of, of Left 4 Dead and, and, and Payday 2. But it's a very different beast. Like when On paper, it's, it's so close in concept. But once you start playing it, you'll realize that the, the it's a slower, more strategic sort of sort of gameplay, punctuated by intense combat, and then with the um, sort of horror uh, survival horror levels of resources that are available to you as a player, it has more of a um, this oppressive, like really creepy atmosphere. Cool. Yeah, because Payday was very much like a intense action, action, action. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Much more arcadey and and uh, fast paced. Yeah. Left 4 Dead's like that too. It had moments of corridor worrying <laughs> about. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Ha it, it has some nice stealth uh, scenarios, definitely. Yeah. I do get very heavy, like alien sort of vibes. Absolutely, yeah. We, we've been inspired by by Alien and Aliens, and, and uh, yeah, the entire franchise pretty much uh, for the lighting and the, the mood, sort of, and yeah. And the, obviously the motion detector <laughs> that you see on the screen right now. <laughs> So you're playing uh, so PVE. Like, is yes. it always four people? Can you play it with less? You can play it with less. Right now, the, the, the difficulty doesn't scale for that. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's uh, up to you as a player. If you if you think that with it's too easy with four players, then you can <laughs> just reduce the team, and then <laughs> it becomes uh, harder. Uh, not a lot of people would would think that it's um, not hard enough, though. So okay, oh, that's hard. It's a challenge. Yeah, it's it's a game where. Um, uh, we don't. If you're not a four-player team, the game doesn't fill out the spots with bots because what you'd expect or what you want that your teammates to do in GTFO, a, a bot really couldn't do. Like it's, it wouldn't be enough for them to just, you know, be bullet sponges and draw some attention from the monsters away from you and shoot back at the monsters and revive you if you, if you're downed. Uh, but actually, we have these puzzles where you gotta like l read. Uh, like passwords off of a screen and read them out loud over voice chat to another player who's by like a terminal and has to type that password into the terminal and puzzles like that and we yeah it would hamper sort of the game design we're trying to do and it, it actually with bots you we would only allow people to play the game in a way that's not supposed to be played we're going like leaning heavily into uh, cooperative gameplay mm. uh, so that's what it's all about you got to find some friends to play with really God, I don't know if I can find three people who would be able to put up with me through this because I'm very, I'm a screamer. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to get. No, that's, <laughs> those are fun at the booth. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. You must have people just yelling out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's looking over like, what's going on over there? It's like, they're just playing a game. It's fine. It's just a game. About it. um, you've been, oh, I think you first showed this off like a few years ago in 2017 originally. So you've been in early access for a while now. Uh, well, uh, we released a trailer in 2017. The first one, I think. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah, a teaser trailer in May, and then uh, this gameplay trailer that showed the first bit, bits and pieces of the actual gameplay in uh, at the Game Awards. Mm -hmm. But it hasn't been in, in early access uh, longer than since uh, December 9th last year. So it's just uh, two and a half months or yeah. something like that. Yeah. And how has that process 
developed? Has it changed anything in terms of like the feedback that you're getting? And you're like, oh, okay, we need to tweak a few things, or, or has it yeah, gone well, pretty good? Yeah, well, a few things. Absolutely, yeah. We we had a, an alpha and beta in uh, October, November, and uh, uh, that gave us good feedback, you know, and uh, a lot of like information about whether the game actually ran on you know hardware. It's on PC right now. Uh, but yeah, also the, the, the community is fantastic, um, and uh, um, sorry, I'm, the community is fantastic. And uh, what's the question? Just like, have you changed anything, like due to feedback or any any kind of things? That not not big things really. No. Like well, that's a good thing. The 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 best thing that that releasing the game has done is really confirming that there is an audience for. A game as niche as this. Yeah, did you see it as a niche game? Because I see it as like, you know, it's a four-player cooperative shooter. That's yeah, but it's very punishing and it's slow-paced okay. and it's uh, yeah, like you can't turn off the friendly fire and it's yeah. I w w we think that it would attract people from from like payday community and yeah. those who like Left 4 Dead and would like there to be a Left 4 Dead three, you know. But it it's a different pace, and I think that people who like like Escape from Tarkov or even Rainbow Six games would would like to, to play this because there is a lot of like uh, tactical aspects of the gameplay. Okay, and in terms of the enemies that people are coming up against, does it are they all the same? We've got different enemy types that do different things. There are different enemy types, types yes, and uh, we're constantly throughout the uh, um, constantly throughout the uh, early access phase will we'll keep adding mm -hmm. uh, new monsters and environment environmental hazards and, and you know interior sets and tools for the player to use in order to combat the different threats uh, so right now we have a, what we would like to think is a, is a great like base baseline for for most aspects of the game there are some super creepy enemies and there are some cool weapons to shoot them with uh, but it's going to grow from here and that's what you guys brought something different to PAX. That's why you said that you have people waiting in line to play the game, even though they already have it. Yeah, we're, we're showing off. The game lives like a string of time-limited events, pretty much. We don't, we're not building a, a, a long, um, like a uh, campaign mm -hmm. where, where there's like 24 maps and that's it. Uh, so the game was released with six maps. Uh, we call that set of maps a rundown. And when we're, we've created a new set of maps, a new rundown, we'll wipe the other rundown so you can never play those maps ag ever again. And then you can only play the new set of maps so that the community is always focusing on the same set of maps. Uh, and uh, that's, I, I've never, I don't know of any other game that works like that. It's sort of like Seasons, yeah. but it's shorter. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're trying to think of like themes for every rundown to have sort of, a, of an over, overarching story sort of approach to it. Do you find that when you release these maps, and since they're only out for a short period of time, do you find the community ends up having to get together and be like, oh, how did you get through this part here? Do they help each other with that kind of stuff? Absolutely, yeah. The, they, um, I mean, there's a lot of bragging rights to just beating the maps, so they, they always tweet that success screen at yeah. the end of the map, like on Twitter and stuff, which is nice. But there's also a lot of like people making tutorials uh, you know, wiki pages and, and uh, video tutorials on YouTube and stuff like that, which is cool. You mentioned that there was a set of maps every time. In terms of the size of those maps, or how long it takes to get through one, yeah. what kind of play time is it? Yeah. 20, 20 minutes to an hour, maybe, okay. for, for everyone. To an hour, if you know how to do it, yeah. but <laughs> thing is, no thing is <laughs> you <laughs> wouldn't beat one of those maps on the first attempt. That's the thing. It is a game where we as designers, we, we expect people to you know, go in and trial and error for a, mm. for a couple of times to figure out what it's all about. They're almost like, to compare it to another game that's totally different, like Destiny Raid kind of things that are like, you have to get together, you have to get to the end of this thing, yeah. and then, you know, you have yeah. to learn the process of the Yes, map. absolutely, yeah. We, we drew actually drew some, some inspiration from, from Destiny in that regard, where it's like the, 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 the expeditions are almost like, like raids. Mm. Uh, and uh, with the building blocks or the elements that we're adding to the game throughout uh, uh, the early access phase, we'll have these different, um, uh, yeah, building blocks that we can actually put together randomly and like, okay, so the uh, players have played against this type of enemy for a couple of rundowns now, but what if we put that enemy in this condition 
and then the environmental condition that we you never encountered that enemy before changes how that how you need to approach that enemy you know darkness or fog or mm. uh, like spores in the air and poisonous gas or whatnot uh, stuff like that just trying to combine things and uh, uh, messing with how players view the the things that s seem to be so familiar that's great what I want to mention also is that I mean it's a game where communication is key that was we're, we're really really pushing um, you got to coordinate you got to communicate and we're here at uh, PAX uh, announcing that we're partnering with Overtone which is a voice chat app uh, currently in development and it's a uh, it's a match made in heaven sort of for a game like this and we're working with them to to see how we can integrate that into the game in a nice way we can't talk, talk right now about exactly how that will work mm -hmm. uh, but you'll be able to find players and, and jump into the game launch the game actually from the overtone app oh, wow. and jump straight into to gtfo uh, so it's um, that's really interesting because it's the idea that like you should be set up with people before you even start to get into this game and that would actually set that as a parameter. Exactly. Find people, then head straight to Yes, it. yes. You would be able to to say, like, what type of games you like, and then the app will sort of find people who are into the same sort of games, and y you can uh, d depend on that, like, trust that the people who, who you're paired with are actually, like, re like reliable It'll players who will not, basically. like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with a friendly fire in this game, it's easy to, to troll people and grief yeah. play, you know? So it's important that you find people that have a microphone, speak the same language as you. Like even uh, that's why the game is, is sort of uh, I think it's it's m like a l in a lot of ways a, a love letter to those people who like already have a team and like playing games like Rainbow Six and so on and have a, like a rapport and a shorthand and have their like set roles within the team and stuff like that. Those uh, players who uh, like those sort of games, that sort of game and. Uh, are uh, looking for more of a challenge, actually, because it's, uh, it's a really challenging game. Is there any other system um, in the game that helps people communicate with each other other than voice chat, or is it like you guys got to talk? Not at the moment. We're looking at ways maybe to... to like a ping system or something? Yeah, like there is a ping system. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad that you mentioned that. I <laughs> almost forgot. Yeah, you can like point, uh, set markers. Every player can set a marker that is co the same color as your, like the text for your character. Uh, and so on in the game, yeah. Okay. But we're looking at ways to, to uh, help the players even more to communicate. Not that it would ever replace actual voice chat. Yeah. Because again, there will be uh, puzzles where you need to like read stuff off of screens or uh, monitors and, and uh, read them back to the other players for them to type into command consoles and stuff like that. We've seen quite a few different weapons so far. Can you talk to us a bit about the kind of weapons that are in the game like do you is it a loadout at the beginning right now the there's a there's a set uh like arsenal that you have to choose from but uh, down the line we're we're gonna add um a progression system where you as a player for your profile sort of collect weapons and can can dismantle them and modify with the parts that you get and stuff like that uh but right now it's the, like the the what do you, I don't know what the word would be the r run of the mill sort of actually weapons. It's just SMGs, SMGs and uh, DMRs and um, revolvers, uh, pistols, machine guns. You know, it's something for everyone, All I guess. What, what's really interesting is the is the tools, because um, it is a game where the player is deprived of so much uh, in terms of like knowing where the monsters are going to come from and, and stuff like that, health and ammo, ob obviously, but uh, we want to make, uh, it, it is a game where, where little things can tip, whatever you can tip in your favor sort of uh, helps so much. So just, if you know that a, f a fight will happen in a room and like you want to get through a, a security door and you know that trying to open the security door would trigger this alarm, you know that th that's th that alarm is going to draw monsters into that room. You start like closing doors, maybe even going into the, the rooms that those doors lead to, and start closing the doors in those rooms, and then backing into that room where you know the fight's going to be, closing those doors as well. Anything that can buy you time. And then there's a foam launcher, which is one of the tools. You shoot the foam on the doors; it will reinforce the doors and make it take longer for the monsters to claw through the doors. Stuff like that um, is really interesting. You got uh, sentry guns; so you got to place those and. Um, 
trip mines. Closing a door and putting a trip mine on the inside is very, very uh, smart because then the first monster that runs through the opening of the door and blows up isn't alone necessarily because the, the they're like uh, a crowd of monsters have have, uh, have like congregated on the other side mm -hmm. of the door because it's it's uh, it takes a while to to get through it for the monsters and then when they finally break through the door that trip mine will take out maybe fi five six monsters instead so there's a lot of like strategy and tactics going into it and you gotta make use of every little tool and, and thing you have so it's not just about like firearms mm -hmm. which i think is a nice thing yeah definitely in terms of the you talked about like the voice app that you guys are, are yeah. working on to get people together overtone is there going to be like any kind of matchmaking that you thought about like that just puts people together who yeah can say that, that's know. part of the plan with with, with overtone yes absolutely the, how it works uh, right now, uh, already uh, in the booth, is that um, we've set up groups where the four computers that we put will, that people use to play together are set up as a are logged into Overtone with their own like uh, individual users. Mm -hmm. One member of those groups of four is a team, uh, party le leader who decides for the group like this is the game we're gonna play, and then everyone that player can actually launch the game and it launches for everyone else at the same time. That's Smart. interesting. Can you filter for like, um, like let's say you prefer to play with people who don't curse or something like that? I don't. F <laughs> no, you're fine. No. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. I don't know. I, I'm really not the, the right uh, yeah. person to, to answer the question. It's just really interesting to be able to kind of yeah, I, I, it's a yeah. smart idea. It, it works really well with what you guys do. Yeah, like, like you, you have I a preference filter, and you can yeah. just tick the box for I'd curse like, words. I'd like language, <laughs> no language barriers. Just let me say whatever I want. Yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna okay. find that. Yeah, I think yeah, that'll be okay. <laughs> well, we've seen a couple of uh, screens of the map. Is that uh, is it a sort of a linear process of like get to point B by the end, or is there going to be multiple paths that you can go down? There's going to be multiple paths. That's actually how we plan on doing the difficulty settings of the game. Because okay. we don't want players to play, be like, uh, like I'm playing GTFO, but I'm playing on easy. Mm -hmm. We want it to be pretty much the same experience for everyone. Uh, that being said, we want it there to be layers to the difficulty within any given expeditions. So the plan is to have like different paths and uh, uh, so that players who are looking for even more of a challenge than what the, ge what the game currently offers, uh, yeah, there's a map. Um, they can actually like go into parts of the map where the risk is higher. Mm. Pos potentially, the, the, the reward would also be. Have you guys uh, found with any expedition that was like way harder than other ones? Yes, uh, every every rundown, as as we uh, as we call the the packs of maps or expeditions, uh, you start at the top because the game takes place in this, in this underground complex. You start at the top and then you work your way d way down, and then the maps at the bottom of the rundown would be the harder the harder ones. So you can't get to those until you've actually completed the ones above it. Right, and those are yeah, the bragging rights are huge. Yeah. Oh gosh. Got to get to the bottom first. Yeah, we got to come up with a way to sort of uh, allow players who've completed rundowns uh, or like the, the really difficult expeditions to have some sort of a badge mm -hmm. on, you know, by their name or by the username or some maybe even some trinkets, you know, dangling from the first person weapon or some, you know, things like that. We're thinking about ideas uh, because, uh, yeah, it is a game where we see a lot of um, people on social media sharing the fact that they're completing you know the levels because it is such a difficult game so i, know, I thought this would make me not want to play it and now i want to play it so much more to be able to prove to everybody <laughs> that, <laughs> that i can do it because now it's like the competitive nature in me is like oh that's it we gotta attack this yeah yeah i Let's think the idea of, of multiple paths is also really interesting you could get four people together who have done the same, or maybe three people have done it, and they're like, "Oh, we've got to go left here," and they're like, "Hey, no, let's go right. Let's go and try." And you got the other people let's in the team the being the like, the "No, <laughs> let's open the big red door yeah. <laughs> with all the like, all the like alien, um, I don't know, glyphs, the language. Maybe don't go back there. Yeah, no. Okay, um, so this uh, thing that you're showing off at PAX has that got a potential 
release date of when it's going to be in the game for people who are in early access yet? I, wi I wish it had, but it's just uh, we're just trying to develop the game ethically in terms of crunch. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's like everyone has a family and yeah, we're, it's, it's, it, the development is, is going slowly but steadily uh, and we're really like averse to to saying dates because we, we announced that the game would be out within a year from um, uh, the Game Awards in 2017, December 2017. It didn't come out during 2018 and it uh, it came out came out in early access, but at in December 2019. So we don't have a good track record with giving dates or even like ballpark, you know, dates. Um, but you so know that. Just so play to your strengths now. Yeah, the strength <laughs> is just yeah to shut up and uh, <laughs> hope that people are patient. Yeah, I mean, if they're playing this game, I feel like they might have to be patient because if you're doing something over and over again, probably inherently is somewhat of a patient person. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, that's great. awesome. Well, thanks for coming down, Simon. It's yeah. great to yeah. have a look at it. Thanks for having me. No problem. Uh, that was GTFO here at the Games Radar PAX live stream. Uh, we'll be back in a few minutes with Maneater, so stay tuned. Ooh.